If you sat down to watch this movie with your family over the festive period, then you've only got yourself to blame. Saltburn has just hit prime after a short stint in the cinema and the build-up to Christmas, and what a movie it was. Focusing on Ollie, a pathological liar who was staying at his good friend Felix's estate with his family during the holidays, we never truly knew what he was up to until the end of the movie. With a reveal that I didn't see coming, and as a whole, a beautifully shot and an elegantly performed movie, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from it. Here is Saltburn, ending explained and review. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The ending explained. So the ending of this movie quite literally turned things on its head. We started the movie in 2006, and we saw most of it set during the following summer in 2007. This was after the first academic year had drawn to a close from Oxford University. We were led to believe that Ollie had feelings for Felix, especially with the movie opening up with it seeming like he was answering that question in the present day on if he was in love with him and if he loved him. But in actual fact, it was about something different. The movie wasn't about an obsession or desire to be with somebody. It was about an obsession and desire to slowly wipe out every single one of their family members so that he himself could inherit the family fortune and have the generational wealth that he seemed to desire. Ollie was an individual that was different to everybody else that he was around. He made out like his life was a lot harder than what it was. He made out like his family didn't really care about him. He said that his dad died. He also said that he was an only child and that his parents battled with addiction, which made him a second thought. However, the reality was completely different. They seemed to be middle class, had a nice house, and he did actually have siblings. This was the first telltale sign that he was a liar and that there could have been alternative motives to what we believed was lust or love. Ollie almost resented everybody else around him for having that generational wealth that he didn't have. The very thing that made him be the outsider amongst all of those around him. We heard on a countless number of occasions how he was seen as different due to the clothes that he wore, the place where he was from, and even when it was his birthday and nobody knew what his name was, that frustrated him too. He didn't like being considered a nobody. And his way of changing that was by devising a plan to get close to Felix, his family, and then stand to inherit all of their wealth by them each being taken out by him in different ways. This stemmed all the way back from their first encounter when Felix's bike had a puncture, making sure that they met. So his way to stop feeling like an outsider was to force himself inside, and not just have it as that dream or story that he'd tell his kids one day at Christmas like Farley said that he would. He made it become his reality. We saw the manipulative edge that he had when he was intimate with Felix's sister and then made out like he wasn't. When he threatened Farley and also when he sabotaged Farley and tried to get rid of him on a countless number of occasions. That also paired with the fact that the longer the movie went on, the more and more he got comfortable around the grounds and it almost showed us that this was now a place which felt like home to him. The first killing that he did was a Felix. After Felix and Ollie's argument in the Saltburn Labyrinth, which was centered around Ollie lying about his family and his situation, Ollie poisoned a bottle of wine, which then led to Felix dying in the center of the labyrinth. This was something which I feel Ollie thought about a while ago because of the scene which occurred in the 47th minute of the movie, where he was trying to navigate through it with the model. Realizing how easy it would be to kill him there and that people would struggle to find him. This was supported with Duncan saying, people get lost easily at Saltburn. Plus, with Duncan also saying that the police were struggling to get through it, it reinforced why he did it there. After this, Ollie stuck around and showed signs of not being that affected by the death of Felix. But it did the opposite to Felix's sister, Venetia, as she was distraught, heartbroken, and felt like she couldn't live on without him. Something which we ultimately saw occur when she was in the bathtub, as Ollie left some razors on the side. Whilst it seemed like he left it there for her to just do because she was so devastated and wouldn't be able to move on, there is also the theory that he could have killed her and just made it out like she did it herself. So I think that's something that we ourselves can decide. Once that was done, Sir James wanted Ollie to leave because he felt the imposing nature that Ollie had in the property and how it was impacting his whole family's life. But Elspeth didn't want him to leave as she'd grown attached to him. So it ultimately meant that Sir James had to pay Ollie to leave, something which seemed to keep Ollie living comfortably for a while, as we saw the movie next pick up in the present day, where it was revealed that James died in 2022, which meant that Elspeth was the only person that was around. We know that Ollie was a watcher, observer, and stalker, 
He would watch from afar, and this was something that was done on countless occasions. And that was the case here when it came to him knowing that Elspeth would be in the coffee shop. He probably tracked her movements and waited until he knew the right time would come for them to meet each other, randomly, despite the fact that he orchestrated it. Once they bumped into each other, Elspeth offered Ollie to go to Saltburn to visit. And this was where the movie then cut to the present day, the time where we heard Ollie speaking during the opening section. Only it wasn't some kind of interview like I thought it would be, but it was in fact in a room where he'd rendered Elspeth to the point where she was critically ill and he was speaking to her, revealing everything that he'd done. He'd made sure that she'd signed all of her property and money over to him, which essentially meant that he was set to inherit that generational wealth that he always wanted. He waited 17 years, but his plan was finally complete, as he ultimately pulled out her breathing tube and then she slowly died. A moment which showed just how brutal, heartless, and psychotic he was, as he inherited the family's fortune at the death of four people. Did he love Felix? I think in Ollie's own sick way, he probably did. Like he said, I don't think he was in love with him, but I think he loved everything Felix was, and he almost wanted that. So by being close to him like he was, he did start to want to be around him. Ollie was the moth and Felix was the flame, but he drained all of the light from him. This was all about desire, passion, and obsession, and the lengths that somebody would go to in order to get what they want. Even with sinister natures, it was also a look at the class system and how people can disregard the most humanistic instincts in order for a piece of wealth. Felix and his family weren't nice people at all. They disregarded everybody and cared for nobody other than themselves. It was about image and just flexing wealth, something which was seen most with their best friend, somebody that they called a friend, but realistically, they didn't care about in the slightest, and when they let her go, she ultimately died. So it also shone a light on that as well. So what did I think of the movie? Well, I really enjoyed Saltburn. I didn't really know what to expect when going into it, but the story had far more to it than I could have ever imagined. What started as what I thought was going to be a bit of a nothing film in the sense that I thought you'd just dip in, watch someone's life, and then leave at the end. It turned out to be something which had substance, mystery, and an ending that made me question everything that I'd just watched. In terms of the way that the movie looked, I thought it was gorgeously shot and graded. The color palette was something which was also really complementary to the natural scenery that was present, and the historical architecture which also got a main focus too. The movie was shot on film, and that was something which definitely contributed to the nice on the eye feel that it had. The grain that would often be present suited the tonally dark movie with the subject matters and performances that matched it as well. In terms of the performances, Barry Keoghan was fantastic in this role. It's definitely one of the best things that I've seen him in. His character was emotionally inept when it came to expressing them outwardly, but you could see the burning desire, hunger, and psychotic nature that he had buried within him, which was something which created a really uncomfortable experience when watching it. The final scene of the dancing through the house was top tier, and it reminded me of that dance scene in Love Actually, but a more sinister version of it. The fact that Murder on the Dance Floor was playing in the background too made the moment even more perfect. With regards to the rest of the cast, I thought they were also perfectly chosen. Rosamund Pike as Elspeth was something which was joyous to watch and you really got the impression that she had no clue what was going on with anything, despite giving the impression that she did. I'd also say the same about Richard E. Grant as Sir James. The character was so well performed and the carefree, smiley attitude that he had when it was clear that none of them had a care in the world was so well executed. Contrasted with how it was at the end where they lost both of their children and there wasn't an ounce of happiness left, it showed real range and it was something that I thought cut through well. Whilst this isn't one of my favorite movies of the year, it's one that kind of sits in its own category because there hasn't really been anything like it. It was a bit like an A24 in terms of the way that it looked and the tone that they often produce, but there was an element of a thrilling type nature to it, so it kind of sits on its own for me. It was enjoyable, but just not enough to crack it into the top list. I know I've said what the ending is all about and explained it, but if you've not seen it, I'd 100% recommend watching it. If you get awkward around family members when it comes to certain scenes in TV shows or movies, then maybe just stick this one on for yourself. It'll just avoid those awkward looks but it's definitely worth a watch. And if you watch it after watching this video, then comment below what you thought of it, because I'd love to know. As well, if you've seen it already, then feel free to do the same. So, there you have it. Saltburn Ending Explained and Review.